I think that, you know, yes, it was a gross, grossly unethical experiment because you are playing with an entire country, the psychology of an entire country without their consent or awareness. And not only are you like playing with the psychology of, of an entire nation, you're playing with the psychology of an entire nation in the context of the dem democratic process. If you want to change politics, you first have to change culture because politics flows from culture. So if you want to change politics, you first have to change people to change the culture. Yeah, so we would know we would know what kinds of messaging you would be susceptible to, including the framing of it, the topics, the content, the tone whether it's scary or not, that kind of thing. So what you would be susceptible to and, and where you're going to consume that. And then how many times do we need to touch you with that in order to change how you, how you think about something. He's been called a street fighter and the most dangerous man in American politics. You argue for your freedom and they call you a xenophobe. You argue for your country and they call you a racist. I like Mr. Ben. He's a friend of mine. He's a good man. He is not a racist. I can tell you that. He's a good person. Look at who he's put in charge of his campaign. Stephen Bannon, the head of a right-wing website called Breitbart.com. Breitbart embraces ideas on the extremist fringe of the conservative right. Let them call you racist. Let them call you xenophobes. Let them call you nativist. Wear it as a badge of honor. Collecting data on people and you're profiling them. That gives you more insight that you can use to know how to segment the population, to give them messaging about issues that they care about and language and imagery that they're likely to engage with. Mm. And we use that in America and we use that in Africa. That's right. what we do as a company. Yeah. We've done it in Mexico, we've done it in Malaysia, and now we're going to Brazil. We have rebranded the entire party twice, written their manifesto, done two rounds of 50,000 so surveys. Huge amounts of research, analysis, messaging. I mean, then we'd write all the speeches and we'd stage the whole thing. So just about every element of his campaign. Mm -hmm. There's no good fighting uh, an election campaign on the facts, because actually it's all about emotion. Whatever the political message, subtlety is key. It has to happen without anyone thinking that's propaganda. Because the moment you think that's propaganda, the next question is who's put that out? Yes. Why now? Why are you releasing this book, How Fascism Works Now? Well, we have a global, ultranationalist, far-right movement crossing many countries, Bolsonaro in Brazil, we've just seen, and they feed off each other.
So I think right now it's very important to make people aware of the features of fascism. The ten pillars of fascism, what are they? The ten pillars of fascism are, number one, a mythic past, a great mythic past. Que época maravilhosa! Você podia ir para a rua com segurança. Você, a tua família era respeitada. O policial era policial. Que você moral tem para falar em democracia? Nós não tem moral nenhuma. Democracia e liberdade tinha, sim. Presidente, subtenente Gonzaga, no período militar. Hoje nós vivemos presos dentro de casa. Number two, propaganda. There's a certain kind of uh, fasc uh, fascist propaganda uh, where everything is inverted. The news is the fake news. Uh, Anti-corruption is corruption. Mais um fake news da Folha de São Paulo. Mentira! Nunca falei isso. Mais uma covardia dessa imprensa. Suja. So three, uh, anti-intellectualism, uh, as Steve Bannon said, it's uh, emotion, rage gets people to the polls. We got elected on lock her up and build the wall. Uh, Hitler and Mein Kampf says, you want your propaganda to appeal to the most, to the least educated people. Number four, unreality. You have to smash truth. So uh, reason gets replaced by conspiracy theories. Uh, hierarchy. Uh, in fascist politics, the dominant group uh, is uh, is is better than everyone else. They were they were like the loyal, the the great people in the past uh, who deserve respect just for being them. Victimhood. In fascism, the dominant group are the greatest victims. The men are the greatest victims of encroaching feminism. Uh, whites are the greatest victims uh, of blacks. Law and order. What are they victims of? They're victims of the outgroup, who are criminals. What, uh, what kind of criminals are they? They're rapists. The outgroup is lazy. They're not just criminals, they're lazy. Só aí, só aí, nós temos praticamente um quarto da população brasileira vivendo as custas de quem trabalha. Alguém já viu um japonês pedindo esmola por aí? Pare de querer viver essa minoria nas tetas de quem trabalha. Se eu chegar lá, não vai ter dinheiro para ONG. Esses inúteis vão ter que trabalhar. Não vai ter um centímetro demarcado para reserva indígena ou para quilombola. Reality is, of course, the greatest threat to fascism, because fascism is based on power and reality is a way. Just remember, what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Eu incomodo, que minha arma é a verdade. 